Have you heard about China and the possible plan to gain control of the moon? How possible can this be? How true are NASA's claims? Recently, Bill Nelson, a NASA administrator, raised worries about China's space plans, specifically that China would somehow claim control of the moon and forbid other nations from exploring. Even though they denounced this as untrue, their recent activity says otherwise, claiming the moon is illegal under space law. In recent years, China has been vigorously expanding its national space program. They were the first nation to successfully land a spacecraft on the moon's far side in 2019. China and Russia announced cooperative ambitions to go to the moon's south pole by 2026 in the same year. Additionally, according to certain Chinese officials and government papers, a permanent manned international lunar research station will be constructed by 2027. Nelson predicted that by 2035, China would have finished building its own moon station and would have launched multiple lunar missions. Recent scientific research claims China intends to shield the Earth from asteroids by defending the moon. According to scientists working on the project, Beijing may expand the planetary defense system it is building in China to the moon and beyond to shield the Earth from asteroids that might conceivably wipe out a city or human civilization. Putting three Guardian satellites into the moon's orbit around the Earth with plenty of fuel and kinetic weaponry is part of the new plan, according to Wu Weren, the lead designer of the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program. On the south and north poles of the moon, two optical telescopes would be constructed to scan the sky for any hazards that elude the ground-based early warning system, particularly those coming from the sun's blind side. According to the plan, the system would send one or all of the Guardian satellites to intercept an asteroid with a lead time as short as one week when it detects a surprise visitor that could cause significant damage. This would be faster than any large rockets launched from Earth. In a paper that was published in the Chinese peer-reviewed journal Science Asinica Informationist on Wednesday, Wu and his colleagues claimed that the system would be able to intercept incoming asteroids from all directions and could form a defense circle that was about 800,000 kilometers in diameter, or about twice the distance between the Moon and Earth. China is constructing a massive radar and telescope-based Earth defense system in an effort to control a mass extinction event similar to the one that took off the dinosaurs some 65 million years ago. However, Wu asserts that an Earth-based system has its limitations. According to an estimate by astrophysicists, around 60% of asteroids large enough to kill a country were not discovered and tracked by humanity, even if the likelihood of an extinction-level impact remains low. Prior to the asteroid strike, none of the significant impacts that have occurred on Earth since the 1970s had raised the alarm. According to Wu's team, all of these asteroids originated from the sun's direction. However, before breaking ground on the moon, China would first fly satellites into the moon's orbit to test its most advanced tracking, surveillance, and interception technology. The researchers plan to send 20 rockets to practice diverting asteroids away from the Earth. Each of these rockets weighs about 900 tons when they leave the Earth, simultaneously potentially diverting the asteroid from its original part. The telescopes and sensors aboard these satellites could potentially be utilized to safeguard China's national security, according to the researchers. According to the study, they have the capability to monitor the geosynchronous orbit, a high-altitude band that is home to numerous military and communication satellites. The Earth defense satellites could assist China in closely monitoring other nations' satellites and enhance the capability to protect high-value space assets. Asteroid collisions are unlikely, but one, the 78 billion kilograms Bennu, has been selected for examination. Bennu is a B-type asteroid, which implies it was produced around 4.5 billion years ago and has a large amount of carbon as well as several other minerals. The asteroid may include chemicals that emerged during the early stages of life's development on Earth as a primordial artifact that the vacuum of space has preserved. Ironically, it might also signal the end of life as we know it. Bennu, which is regarded as potentially dangerous, will approach Earth's orbit by 7.5 million kilometers between 2175 and 2199. Bennu has a 1 in 2700 probability of hitting Earth, but Given the potential damage the asteroid may wreak, experts are nevertheless worried about the possibility. The asteroid would need to be diverted with a tremendous amount of kinetic force, but using nuclear power runs the risk of shattering an asteroid like Bennu into pieces that may still strike the Earth. 
This makes sending numerous rockets, each of which would need three years to travel before reaching their destination, a more feasible alternative. In 10 years, according to researcher Li Mingtao, it is possible to protect against huge asteroids with a nuclear-free technology, the South China Morning Post reported. Unused rocket fuel may provide more thrust and increase the rocket's overall mass, increasing deflection effectiveness. According to the experts, adding thrusters would be all that is needed to make existing rockets suitable for the mission. An asteroid of this magnitude requires enormous amounts of kinetic energy to be diverted, yet employing nuclear energy runs the risk of shattering the asteroid into smaller fragments that might still destroy Earth. This makes sending numerous rockets, each of which would need three years to travel before reaching their destination, a more feasible alternative. Similar efforts are being planned by the U.S., including Hammer, which would launch 400 tons of rocket material to Bennu and shorten the journey's duration to two years. That strategy would cost more money and need more time to execute. The Chinese proposal would just require a decade's notice, whereas the United States would need 25 years to find the asteroid. Bennu is being pursued by a spacecraft that NASA also launched to gather samples from the asteroid. Before lowering its three-meter-long arm to gather stray rock fragments, OSIRIS-REx hovered above the asteroid. NASA anticipates OSIRIS-REx's arrival back to Earth in 2023, along with its samples. China is not legally permitted to occupy the moon since doing so would violate existing international space law. Outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies, is not subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty, by means of use or occupancy, or by any other means. The 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which was signed by 134 nations, including China, states expressly, Although legal experts disagree on the precise definition of appropriation, the treaty indicates that no government can claim ownership of the moon and declare it's an extension of its national aspirations and prerogatives. China would run the danger of international criticism and potential retaliation if it attempted this. Article 1 of the Outer Space Treaty permits any state to investigate and use celestial bodies, but no nation can claim ownership of the moon. China won't be the only country to travel to the South Pole of the Moon in the near future. Twenty nations have signed on to the U.S.-led Artemis Accords, which calls for the return of people to the Moon by 2025. As part of this plan, a research station will be built on the lunar surface, and a space station called the Gateway, with support functions, will be launched into orbit in November 2024. Even while no nation has the legal right to claim sovereignty over the moon, it is nevertheless conceivable for China or any other nation to use the tactic of salami slicing to gradually take control of strategically significant parts. This method entails taking modest, gradual stages to make a huge change. Individually, those actions do not call for a strong reaction, but their combined impact results in considerable development and greater control. In the recent past, China has employed this tactic in the South and East China Seas. Even so, addressing such a strategy takes time. China is spending a lot of money on space technology, with a total of 55 orbital launches in 2021 compared to the U.S.'s 51. It took the lead in this category. China ranks among the top three nations for spacecraft deployment in 2021. The Tiangong space station is almost complete, and China's state-owned Starnet space firm is preparing a mega-constellation of 12,992 satellites. The cost of taking over the moon would be substantially more than the cost of traveling there. The predicted $13 billion space budget for China in 2020 is less than half of that of NASA. In 2020, the U.S. and China both boosted their space budgets compared to the previous year, the U.S. by 5.6% and China by 17.1%. All that the Chinese have done and are doing concerning space is why NASA is suspicious of their motive. In response to the director of NASA's comments, the Chinese government expressed its outrage, claiming that the accusations constitute a grave threat to the peaceful use of space. According to China, its space exploration is always done to further laudable, economic, social, scientific, technological, and security goals. What do you have to say about China taking over the moon? Let us hear from you in the comments below.